Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jiang Zhenjian. Zhong Wen Hua, Zhang Zixiao, Zhang Zhang. Um, you may have noticed that Dick called us um, Kevin Networks. Um, and then we, we actually changed our name to Kevin Inc. The reason is we are expanding. So the, we, we, we are becoming a UEFI member, and we are doing the presentation here is because we expanded our business out from network into survey. So um, um, starting from two years ago, we started to work on ARM-based server. Um, and uh, uh, together with AMI and uh, other partners, as, as you all know, um, it takes a village to raise a child. So, um, so here, um, I um, together give this presentation with AMI to give industry an update of where we are, you know, where we are heading for, and what we are thinking about um, the uh, ARM-based modern software, and why um, we take the approach of standardized firmware and what we have today. So, it's why and what we stand today, and what's our uh, plan, and uh, also we touch base about our engineering process to enable it. And in the end, that's option round challenge that was put um, a, a week ago, and uh, after done, we really touch base about this topic. And uh, on Tuesday afternoon, we had a meeting, so um, um, I uh, probably give a very quick update. Uh, about the meeting. And then in the end, it's the Q&A session, but uh, feel free to ask a question uh, at any time. Um, so here's the segments that we are targeting for. Um, high performance computing, cloud compute infrastructures, and the telecommunication equipment, storage servers, open compute platform servers, and web policy servers. So as you see, uh, they are all the very demanding uh, asks, and uh, the uh, requirements are that diversified, diversified requirements. So, so to answer this challenge, uh, we developed a uh, workload optimized um, ARM-based software called the Sounder X. So Sounder X, um, each chip has uh, up to 48 ARMv8 cores. Um, it's multi-socket capable and uh, having use a Kevin proprietary um, link technology called CCPI. Um, each, each core can have uh, up to uh, four memory controllers. That means in a two-socket system. Uh, it could have up to one terabyte of memory. Um, in terms of I.O., um, we have building support for 40G, 100G, actually it's, more, it's 40G, 10G, 25G, 100G, um, because we are actually was a network company, so we are good at it. Um, PCIe, uh, Gen3, SATA, uh, standard, standard space, low latency Ethernet fabric, uh, virtual I.O., and uh, a single and a dual socket. So um, we have family specific accelerators. So in the SOC, in the non-core uh, subsystems, we build in some uh, accelerators uh, to accelerate operations for specific workloads, like for storage, for networking, for compute, and for security. So um, it's one SOC, but it's actually a SOC family. Uh, when you order the SOC, uh, you would uh, tell us uh, how many cores you want, what SKU you need. Uh, the SKU would be compute, security, uh, storage, and uh, uh, network. Um, some, some, some platforms, they have a two socket system, and one socket is, is storage, another socket is compute. Or one socket is network, another socket is, is, is compute. So, so you, 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 um, you design as what you need. So that's our approach to answer for workload optimized um, approach. Uh, as you all know, uh, AMI is um, very good 
uh, they understand the uh, server business. Uh, they know um, the end users asks. So, um, so we partner with, with AMI to deliver a total solution. Um, what, what, so, so we do a divide and a conquer, and a divide and conquer approach. Um, in Kevin, Kevin's new, uh, former team, we, um, we develop our Kevin new, um, firmware based on the Tiano core. So for people you, you, you have not heard of Tiano core is, okay, so we based on Tiano core, so I think everybody here knows about Tiano core. Uh, but um, uh, Ninaro, as the, 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 the Arn community also develops something on top of Tiano core, that's the Ninaro um, UEFI code base. So Kevin's a former team develops code on top of the Ninaro UEFI um, code base. So Kevin's former team um, collaborates closely with Linaro UEFI team and uh, with the Tiano core community, ETK2 community, to um, to collaborate um, on the on the on the on the uh, mainline code main, mainline code. Uh, we engage directly with Linaro uh, and uh, an ARM and broader community, and uh, that. Software is a reference software. So reference code are provided only to partners like AMI. So it has limited features and we do not support it for the end user environment. The, the, and then AMIs take it from there and develop it into a full commercialization product. The AMI UEFI supports single socket and dual socket system. It has full system management software uh, capability. Uh, we call it a, a mega rack. It has out of band management via the IPMI. Uh, it supports UEFI ACPI boot structure. Um, it also lists a, a, a foundation for, for, for uh, further customizations. Uh, in, uh, so uh, Robert will present uh, about what MS UEFI has to enable that. Um, Ken and MI works together um, to collaborate on those customer designs. Also, we provide uh, support on a global basis. So here is the uh, architecture. Um, we, we, we take the standardized uh, architect, uh, approach. I, I'm glad that Tony, today's Tony, uh, explained what exception level is. So this doesn't look so mind-boggling um, mind anymore, I guess. Um, so ES3 is the uh, um, secure monitor. It runs the ARM trusted firmware. Um, and ES2 is UEFI and hypervisor. And ES1 is the OS. You could have multiple OS things. And then ES0 is the user app application. In the um, ARM trusted Firmware, there's PSCI to manage the course state transition. Uh, SMC interface to, um, to understand what SMC call the upper layer of software um, wants to make. Um, I do not have secure ER0 and secure ER1 here is because today we don't have secure ER0 and secure ER1. I look forward to, um, to develop, develop in, in that area. So um, over the last several years, um, ARM communities worked tirelessly with the UEFI and the ACPI, uh, UEFI forum to uh, port UEFI ACPI specs to support uh, ARM architecture. Uh, as of ACPI 6.0 and the UEFI 2.4, the foundation is there. So you have a working system. But that's, in, that's not enough. Um, more features needs to be added, needs to be supported. So um, early this month, March 2016, uh, UFI Forum announced ACPI 6.1 and uh, UFI 2.6, and half half of the new specs is related to Rust support in uh, for ARM. So Rust is uh, reliability, availability, and serviceability. The first one is interrupt signal event for expanded 
hardware reduce platform support and improve the system and chip design. So hardware, so ARM is a hardware reduced platform. Um, the reason for this fact change is that uh, up until now, before this before this fact change, um, you have to have a GPIO to interrupt the X core um, for the X core to do something. Uh, but GPIO resources is is precious, so this allows. Uh, the X core to make an interrupt, uh, no, allow the uh, managing the core, that's a dedicated core for management in the SOC to send an interrupt to the X core so that X core will uh, handle stuff like RAS functionality. So let's say if a hardware error happens, uh, the management core respond to it and then handles it. And then uh, once it prepares the data, then send an interrupt to App Score. So App Score take it over from there uh, using the API interface. Uh, second is standardized ARM processor support for firmware first hardware error handling and reporting, including SEA and SEA notification types. So in ARM architecture, there's no NMI. So the, the, the kind of like equivalent is SEA and SEA. That's Synchronous error robot and uh, system error interruption. Um, UFS spec 2.6 introduced ARM error reporting extensions for CPER. So in the CPER, it standardized the error format related to the process processor errors. So that when a processor error happens, you look at the uh, error record. It contains all the information you need to debug the issue and to understand the cause. In addition to UFI and ACPI, um, ARM also um, um, creates additional standards so that all the SOC based on ARM, um, they all use, use, use standard approach um, for, for both software and hardware. Uh, so SPBR is a server-based requirement. This is public available. Uh, the SPSA server-based system architecture version 3 um, is not publicly available. It's only available to the ARM customers. Uh, but uh, the point is that uh, through those standards, together with UC, UEFI and ACPI, um, different vendors, ARM, SOX, they, they use the same approach, um, use the standard approach and uh, to make sure uh, the software can can, can run without any problem on different um, on, on, on socks made by different vendors. So uh, we, we switch to the next section is what system features are available on a founder based um, product platform through the standard standardized firmware. The PMC. Um, so PMC Features today, so BMC features, um, BMC is for out of band management. And today, the BMC, the um, like AMI BMC, they, they support, they have full support for IPMI 2.0. Support the server over LAN, uh, so you can have the server console to the, um, to the Thunder X. Um, it has full SSI interface so that Thunder software can send data to BMC through SSI. Uh, it supports flashing of CPLD, fast flashing, as well as the firmware on the uh, on Thunder X. Supports centralized fan control, remote media directing, centralized web interface, and remote KVA. KVA. Um, when we design the platform, uh, you know, we, we, we work with our vendors. Uh, one of the goal is trying to minimize the customization needed on, on BMC. Uh, because of the SOC difference and because of the platform hardware design differences, we, uh, customization is unavoidable, but um, we want to minimize it as much as possible. Here are the approaches we take to, to minimize it. First is that all the software running on the CPU you know, on, on Power X, SOC, 
um, to OS and the firmware. They, they, they support the server management standards, IPMI, and BIOS. SOC, specific processes and functions. Uh, we make sure it's done in the, in the CPU software, but not in the uh, BMC software. And uh, when we design the system function, for example, like host initiated shutdown, um, we 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 we, we um, make the goal to let BMC not to participate in the system functions. We have the um, Thunder software communicate directly with CPLD firmware. So BMC we try to limit it to just monitor and reporting functions. So. Um, we think that uh, the ARM community think that there's a lack of standardization of how in-band and out-band management work together. So uh, with the SOC, um, it's, it's very complex. There are a lot of, besides there are 96 cores, besides there are 48 cores, and each core has, has core groups and uh, caches. There are a lot of other subsystems, for example, for example like the management core, for example, like the PCIe. Uh, load complex and, uh, and, and the other stuff is very complex, so the inbound management also becomes complex. So how they work together? Uh, we think this is uh, something needs to be addressed by, stand, by, by standard body. Uh, here is our dual socket topology. So you have uh, dual sockets and they are linked uh, by CCPI and each socket um, has their own DDRs, peripherals, and boot flashes. Uh, CCPI makes sure the two, two sockets, uh, they are synchronized. They, they, they are coherent with each other. Um, this dual socket support is, is through a name called NUMA, um, non-uniform memory access. Um, and uh, um, it's, it's, it, 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 it is a standard in ACPI already, so we describe it to the, the high-level operating system based on SRAT and SLIT tables. So that's system resource affinity table and system locali locality interface table. It's already working. Um, the patches for NUMA are being upstream. It's not accepted yet, but it's working, and we are continuously to make improvement. Uh, today, with the Linux corner um, 4.6 uh, RC0, you can download it, and it runs without any patch uh, on our one S system, one socket system. But for two socket system, you need some uh, patches that is being upstream, uh, but not accepted yet. Uh, PCIe, PCIe is very important. So uh, we have validated uh, one or two devices for each of the categories. Uh, they work on the Thunder X platform. Uh, we need devices, storage devices, portable PCIe devices, NVMe devices, and uh, devices with optional. So uh, um, we want to enable uh, IHVs to have their um, card working with our platform. Um, so uh, we look forward to collaborate with them. Uh, so what we achieved already is the enumeration of PCIe devices in UFI shell, and the PCIe device configuration in UFI shell, and full functioning of PCIe devices. Uh, we think there could be more standardization of PCIe in SBSA. Right now in our Linux driver, or in our UFI driver, we have we have a lot of custom logic to deal with custom hardware. So we think there could be more standardization of PCIe in SPSA. And uh, um, we think that the PCIe device description in DSDT, uh, we, it could have more work so that uh, the OS driver, the, 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 the OS PM driver for the PCIe device could be, uh, look, could look better uh, instead of a more like device tree um, uh, Ross, um, reliability is minimum the impact of error. Basically, when error happens, we need to quarantine it so that the error doesn't cause 
impact that it shouldn't cause. Like if, if there's a memory error related to a VM, only kill that VM. Don't, 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 don't impact others. If there's an issue with ACPU code, just, just um, uh, hot plug that core. Uh, we still have 47 cores. Um, availability is I interrupt the system operation and the consistent uh, workload performance. So uh, let's try to get the CPU cycle as much as possible, as close to 100% to the application developers. Um, don't try, try not to steal uh, uh, CPU cycles for unnecessary stuff. Serviceability. Um, with, with, with huge, so even though the server hardware, they are, they are server great hardware, they, their uh, failure rate is very low, but with insane amount of hardware in the server and with huge amount of server in the data center, um, they are failures every day. Uh, and um, uh, parts get degraded. So um, it's important to be able to give the ability to do predictive failure analysis and uh, inform the data center operators uh, where and uh, what needs to be done in the schedule maintenance. So schedule maintenance is okay, but not as good as downtime. Um, today in the Linux, there's a project called EDAC. It's error detection and correcting drivers. Uh, EDAC approach, we think is an excellent approach for embedded application, but not necessarily for server. One reason is uh, EDAC runs in Linux, so that's only si not, it only sees stuff that non-secure world can see. It doesn't see secure memory. It doesn't see secure peripheral. Uh, so if problems hap if hardware happens in those kind of hardware component, EDAC driver couldn't do anything, doesn't know about it, doesn't see it. Um, OS support, EDAC is only supported by Linux. So uh, like Windows, we only use API. Uh, CPU cycle, so EDAC, takes, so let's say for every corrected error, or, 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 or for every like, non-important hardware error that could be discovered, could be, um, could be, could be ignored, but EDAC driver still needs to respond to it, and then that impacts the CPU cycle. So for volume-based servers, uh, we think former first approach is more appropriate. Uh, another possible approach is to have PMC that handle uh, all those events, but um, um, that's, that's a possibility. So this is the architecture uh, of the, to support the Rust, firmware first approach. So, 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 so from the hardware to firmware to OS corner to user space. Um, the, the, the green ones are the ones that are unmature are mature, and the yellow ones are the ones that need some work. So on the hardware side, so when there is a hardware error, so, so hardware error detecting and in, in, injecting, um, that's already there, works perfectly in Thunder X. Um, when there's a hardware error happens, let's say there is an L2 cache error happen, uh, L2 cache error or there's a CCPI leak error, um, an interrupt will be generated. Um, and, uh, and the error syndrome register will contain the pertinent information. And uh, you can also inject error to, 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 to simulate an error. On top of that, in our next generation, uh, we, will take, we will incorporate the ARM Rust extension, which is the extension to the ARM core. Um, and it has a lot of, it's, it's dedicated for us. Um, um, the, 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 the main component, the major component of the Rust extension is it added instruction. Uh, that is error synchronization barrier. So, 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 so when you run this instruction, uh, you know at this time, your hardware does not have any errors. All the errors are cleared up. Um, 
and uh, there are rust related registers in, 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 in core, so you, you understand how, uh, core errors more, uh, more precisely. Uh, so the to so the to do related so ARM Rust extension is 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 is, is comparatively new. So to do adding is we need to review the SDI UFS spec to see what needs to be added to, to support this new hardware and develop the standard code to support the new hardware and new spec possible new spec. Um, on the former side. Uh, we already said that in ACPR 6.1 and the UFI 2.5, now we support uh, ROS in R, and uh, um, we just need to upstream the, the patches. So, so the patches are there, just needs to be upstream. Um, and uh, we, we need to develop ATF and UFI code to support this spec. So now, we talk about the interface between OS and the platform. What about platform? Um, how do you design the platform to handle the Rust errors? There are two approaches. One is a dedicated core, runs platform software, maybe an embedded OS to achieve the goal. Second is what Tony just described. That is the management mode. So the, 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 the AP processor enters into MM to execute platform code to achieve the goal. Um, the code runs in secure UI, but it's still on the app processor. You don't need a dedicated code for that purpose. Uh, comparing to SCP, MM has more standardization and less hardware complexity because you don't need to wire the interrupts to another core. You don't need another core. So the call for acting is um, join the ABSD and the PIWG, as Tony said. Um, and the PIWG spec 1.6 or 1.5. Um, the draft is out, it's been reviewed, and it will be published soon. So um, review the, the spec proposal and the voice up if you have any concerns. Or if you see any um, um, blank spot, um, and then we need to develop the code to implement the spec. And then once the framework is there, then we need to develop the Rust code. Rust code on top of the framework. So other system features we support UEFI 2.5. Um, we can boot from SATA, USB, SD, MMC, and Pixie boot. We support all the runtime services. Uh, to do added, secure firmware update, secure boot. That to some extent, depending on the MM. Uh, now, I, 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 I um, um, I introduced um, uh, Robert from MI to um, to give presentation on this side. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Robert. Uh, I'm in charge of MI server hacking business. Uh, I would like to show you the uh, Optio MI UEFI BIOS on Kevin Sounder against features. Actually, we have finished the uh, setup menus and SPI driver, PCI driver, uh, HCI USB, and you can use PC boot to install OS on your system. And how can uh, how we compare it to BNC? Uh, actually, we follow the IPMI 2.0 spec, and we use SSIF interface to compare it to BNC. Because uh, on our systems, we only have I square C can. Uh, this uh, to completion to PNC, so we use the SSIF interface, and we also added the uh, uh, VAE module to support a uh, uh, new interface SSD. Actually, we have tested the uh, Intel 750, and uh, we also. Uh,
Okay, so uh, lots of features uh, we have complete our KBS production. Yeah, thank you. So on the NCPI side, today we have those NCPI tables, DSD, TSSDT, MADD, TDD, LRT. LRT uh, is something new that's introduced in NCPI 6.0, and it's used to, de to describe the SMMU and PC geek uh, uh, topologies, IO topologies. So it's IO resource table. SRT, SL, SLIT is for NUMA, MCFT, SPCR, and DVD2. Uh, when it comes to power management for the system states, we only support S0 and S5. We are working on to support more. Processor states, we support C0 and C1. So there's only one other state. However, with ACPI 6.0, there's a new concept called no power idle states because in ARM SOC, you have in our case, there are 48 cores, and you have L1 cache, L2 cache. So uh, we all can have um, many other states, and each other states you related to different hardware components in the core group to go into other. So that L LPI is something for for Kevin firmware. We need to do that. We have not done that yet. Device state uh, that's in development. We don't support it as of today. We are working on it. Okay, now this section is about engineering process. So we talk about the features. Now we talk about some considerations we do throughout our, throughout our engineering process to support standardized firmware. So this is the illustration of a commercialized firmware. Would it be would come would have code coming from those components. Uh, one, uh, you know, the, 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 the basic core is the EDK2, and then there's the Minaro core, Minaro UEFI. And then Kevin's firmware team works on the code that you need to, to make the best out of standard. And then MIST, MIST they work on to commercialize the product. So, with the success of ThunderX, now we are, we are having an explosion of platform and slot combinations. How do we manage that? Right. So, how, how do we manage that with these resources and uh, with best quality? So, the, so, so the, the, the solution we have is we have a disciplined software architecture is standard based and also follows this workflow. Um, and in our design and coding, we consistently follow follow the uh, follow this architecture concern. Um, the green boxes, green uh, rectangles, are the uh, images, right? Those images are the same for different platforms and the software variation. Let's say you have a SOC 1.0, 2.0, same image. You have different companies, platforms, same image. Right. Um, those blue ones, so this one is unique for platform uh, and maybe SOC um, combination. This one, calibration data and user-defined configuration data, that is unique for machine. And uh, a user could change it and run that too. Um, you can change the CPU frequencies like that. And, uh, and those data feed into the early bootloader. Uh, early bootloader would generate platform configuration and give it to UEFI. Uh, UEFI use that to, to configure the system and the boot time. And UEFI also takes the AC, default ACPI table and the together to generate a final ACPI table, give to OS. So in the end, the OS would see fully customized description of this machine that has in consideration of the platform and SOC features and the user's demand. 
Ecuador. Um, and uh, um, AMIS UEFA also has some, um, some uh, goodies to help in this perspective. I will come here again. Actually, we uh, deliver the visual files to deliver all the architectures. And you, it's uh, uh, easy to use either your modules or functions into your project. And we also have uh, SVN. You can download all eight my modules from SVN. Uh, actually, if you interested in KVM projects, if you want to kick off this project, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Um, this optional challenge um, done already. Set all those well, 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 well done. Um, I just want to say that uh, for the Tuesday's meeting, we I think I. I I guess it's okay for me to say it, is that uh, we will encourage the EBC also, and we will enable it. And then um, we allow for the native port, and we discourage the emulation of That's it. Questions? Yeah, please. Uh, I have a question. Uh, 